We have a second honoree tonight, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about him. Tonight we'll be honoring Oliver G. Gilbert III. Chairman Oliver G. Gilbert III is a progressive and visionary who believes there's no singular path to success. Born and raised in the city of Miami Gardens, he remains committed to pouring into the community that helped groom him into the public figure he is today. Chairman Gilbert is a proud graduate of Florida A&M University where he earned his Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice and the University of Miami School of Law where he earned his Juris Doctorate with honors. Chairman Gilbert is a seasoned attorney with over 20 years of legal experience, and in 2012, he reached the then pinnacle of his career when he was elected mayor of his hometown, the city of Miami Gardens. <laughs> Chairman Gilbert's civic activities extended outside of Miami Gardens, and he is a former president of the African American Mayors Association and held a seat on the board of directors of the Florida League of Mayors National League of Cities, U.S. Conference of Mayors Advisory Board, as well as President of the Miami-Dade County League of Cities. Here to honor uh, Oliver G. Gilbert III today is Saif Ishouf. He is the founder of Lab 22C and also Mr. Miami, because if you're around Miami, he's literally everywhere. So if Saif Ishouf could come <laughs> to the stage. How about a round of applause for our MC, Syra? You're crushing it. And there's nothing like being able to call aunties and uncles by their first name. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Tonight, I have an absolute honor of sharing an introduction of somebody who I've known for over 25 years, Chair Oliver Gilbert. Our friendship began over 25 plus years ago at the University of Miami School of Law. And in reality, we do share a lot of funny stories together. There's no doubt about that. If you know Oliver and you know me, there's no shortage of funny stories. But the truth of the matter is, what bonded us over 25 years ago is that we were part of a very small group of men of color that were at law school together at the University of Miami. And in that group, we forged truly a brotherhood. I'm so very proud today to think that amongst that brotherhood include now the chair of the Miami-Dade County Board of County Commissioners. Let's clap it up for Oliver. And another distinguished lawyer by the name of Jared Davis of greenberg Troark. The truth is, let's give it up for Jared. I mean, he's not here, but he'll post about it on Facebook, so. Now, from the start of the friendship that I started to gain with Oliver, a couple of things really began to stand out. And most notable amongst that was his deep commitment to service. And if you know Chair Gilbert, that commitment to service long predates his time in elected office. It goes back to his very origin story as a leader in the neighborhoods and the communities that he loves and of which he is now chair of for our entire Miami-Dade County. Now, over the course of his 11 plus years as an elected official, Chair Gilbert has lended his voice and sometimes that voice is very loud, as we know. He shows up, but most importantly, he takes the time to shine a light on the issues that matter most in our community. Whether those are complex issues like transportation, or whether or not that's about our youth in our community, or about ensuring every resident in this county is able to access a form of economic uplift. And I want to say something that I think really matters as we honor Chair Gilbert tonight. He is a leader who has always shown up for the Muslim community. And I don't mean showing up for the Muslim community when it's in vogue to do so, when it might look good on Instagram. I mean showing up for the Muslim community when it mattered, when being an elected official and showing up for the Muslim community meant risking demonization in the media. It meant risking being chastised by Islamophobic voices, many of whom they aren't here anymore. And we wouldn't even retweet them because we would just give them our eyeballs, and we're not going to do that. And I'll say, if you know this, and if you ask leaders like Brother Khalid Mirza, if you ask leaders like Dr. Imam Samra, they know and they will attest to the fact that 
Chair Gilbert has shown up for our community time and time and time and again. I think Imam, Imam Samra might even say that Chair Gilbert is the type of guy who might even do 20 rakah of uh, tarawiyah during Ramadan and not duck out at eight like the rest of us. So that's, that's who he is. And what I want to say now is a little bit more deeply personal. If you really know Chair Gilbert, you will understand that who he is is much more than just a community bridge builder and an elected leader. He's somebody that actually channels a spirit that all of us in this room here tonight can kind of relate to. In our community, we have those amongst us, our uncles, our aunties, that it's their silence, it's their deep wisdom. That's what speaks volumes. And if you know if you know Oliver, and yes, I did analogize the chair of our county board of commissioners to an uncle, so if that's what I was doing, which is a beloved term in our community. But I think that that matters a lot because Chair Gilbert gives you his honest, raw take on the important issues of our community. They are unvarnished and they are without fluffy, sugary words. And that authenticity is actually telling us that he is a voice of moral clarity amidst the noise. And I know this really well because over the years, for my friends who know me, sometimes I'm the person that brings to the table bold ideas. Oliver is that one who might look at me and say, please, Saif. But then he'll do something more powerful. He'll say, go on. And he finds a way to translate bold ideas on the behalf of our residents, the residents that he has served for so long, and translate those bold ideas into actual action for our residents. That is what his form of power actually feels like, all the while listening to every single voice in every part of our community, every corner of our community, you can see Cheryl Gilbert stepping up. The translation of all of this is, do not play with Chair Gilbert. <laughs> That's what that means. Do not play with Oliver. He is somebody that, time and time and again, is willing to take the decisions and make decisions on behalf of our communities that are really representative of that moral clarity. And that is the reason why, tonight, we are so very fortunate to be able to honor Chair Gilbert as our community bridge builder. And so, for me and for everybody who's here, it's an absolute honor for us on the behalf of the entire South Florida Muslim community and quite frankly, all of our allies that are in our room here tonight that have shown up for the Muslim community, it is our honor, it is my absolute joy on the behalf of Cosmos to present our dear brother, Chairman Oliver Gilbert with this distinguished award of Community Bridge Builder. Please come to the stage, brother. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Thank you. Saif, uh, th thank you for your, the kind words and also thank you for your friendship. Uh, you, you kind of told them how old we are though now. <laughs> so thank you for that also. Yeah, no, I appreciate you. More love. Yeah. Um, I, I saw Ray Jadala, our fire chief, walk in. You all give a round of applause for our fire chief. He's going to wonder if Ray Jadala's over there. Also, I know his name has been mentioned before, but he's here with his lovely wife, my colleague on the county commission. I, I have the benefit of serving as the privilege of serving as the chairman of the county commission. I'm one of 13. We are all county commissioners representing 2.7 million people here in the county. Keone McGee. And lastly, I would just say, uh, the Namada is over there. She, she runs uh, county purchasing. You all clap for her. That's the person who controls all the money stuff. And last but certainly not least, the chief operating officer of the Board of County Commissioners, the person who actually tells me what to do on a daily basis, <laughs> Teresa Theralis, she's over there. Um, 
I, I didn't prepare any remarks necessarily. That, but as I was sitting here and I was listening to everyone, I was sitting at our table, I, I loved your remarks. I thought to myself, this type of unity, this type of community, is the proof through the night that our flag is still there. It is the proof through the night. Hate is making a comeback. Whether it be Islamophobia, racism, anti-Semitism, discrimination against the LGBT community, hate is making a comeback. It, it only loses if we beat it. And we can only beat it if we wake up and love and live and learn through empathy. Not sympathy, but empathy. Well, I think maybe we stop teaching that in school at some point. I learned it from my mom, who was a Seventh-day Adventist teacher, and my dad, who was a Baptist preacher. Th their difference in religion didn't stop them from loving and creating life for us. Th they didn't see their differences. They saw what they had in common. And so as we wake up every morning and we see our differences, and we continue to identify ourselves through and by our differences, we forget that those are just a small fraction. We have far more in common. The future that we want to build that we can only build together for our children, we have that in common. The fact that we want safety, the fact that we want good education, the fact that we want public health, these are things. The fact that we just want to live our lives uninterrupted, want the same for someone else that you want for yourself. Saif said that I, I always, I've always been there, I have, and I will continue. I was, I was there for the Muslim community as the mayor of Miami Gardens, I'll be there as the chair of the county commission, and the county commission will be there. <laughs> because together we stand for the proposition that Miami-Dade County can demonstrate for the world what it looks like to truly embody the extraordinary nature of what America is and what America is to become. What, what America is, and we talk a lot about our diversity, it's not just our diversity of, of nationalities or race, or, it's our diversity of thought. It's our diversity of belief. It's finding a way to collect all of those things together and create a place that is, is not just tolerant, but it's accepting. The Constitution was written to grow and to embody that thing, to allow that country to build itself and regenerate itself over and over and over again. But it only happens if we believe and we believe in each other. I appreciate you all. God bless you all. Thank you very much for this opportunity.